grace and peace to you on this beautiful day here in July. Uh, we're thankful that you're joining us at GLC Online. We have a powerful worship planned uh, for today, and we pray that wherever you are and wherever you're hearing this message, uh, that it will equip you for a beautiful faith life in following Jesus. It's a special day, a rooted and rising day. You've heard that message maybe a few times uh, here where we're rooting and rising into Christ and how God leads us forward. So my sermon will be tailored to that with some inspiration along the way. You notice a backdrop that looks a little bit different. This was our vacation Bible school week, and from the 105 of us who were gathered here together this week celebrating in vacation Bible school, we say thank you for helping to make that possible. We had a curriculum entitled Just Like Me, and all throughout the week we were learning how God is with us and for us and how God pours out grace and life into each person and their uniqueness, the abilities that they have, and again, the ways that they're called to live their gifts in the world. So thank you for all of those who serve so faithfully. Thank you for your generosity that makes it possible. Uh, one of the songs was, we're going to shout, shout, shout it out. And indeed, we are going to shout out the good news of Jesus Christ. And so continue to provide those blessings, folks, as you are able, so that we can continue our good work and be with people both here and throughout the world. As always, go to our website, our Facebook page, see the news and notes, the celebration events that are happening, faith formation opportunities, podcast, and ways to make an impact. Well, as we begin now, I invite you to center your heart uh, through this word of prayer. Loving Lord Jesus, today as we participate in spirit-filled worship, we recognize it's your spirit that brings us to full life. And so may the message, the good news of the gospel, transform us and equip us to pour our lives out for the sake of the world. We're so thankful for you, for all that you've accomplished in and through Jesus. So let your Holy Spirit infuse us to full measures of life and faith, we pray as we root and rise in Jesus, and God's people say, Amen. Let your roots run deep, let your roots run deep, deep into the heart of Jesus. Let your roots run deep, let your gospel for this day comes from Mark chapter 6. 
The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And so they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. For this special sermon on Rooted and Rising, I want us to look at that gospel uh, from Mark today where it said the people were like sheep without a shepherd. And so this is why they were searching him out. They desired uh, transformation. They desired life. And in him, they recognized that potential and possibility. Do we too, in the time in which we live, as we do our work together as the church, do we recognize that at times we are like sheep without a shepherd? We push Jesus away. Maybe we don't even acknowledge his presence. We don't pay attention uh, to his activity in our life. But then when we come together as the church, we're reminded, yes, Jesus is there. Each person is an indwelling of Christ. And that as we share in story, he begins to show us that we are one, one body of Christ. All unique, all different, all with different stories and challenges, but we are the collective body of Christ. Well, to draw deep into that, and to share these stories of transformation, I want us to look at the book of Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians can be broken out in about five ways. Uh, the first part is a beginning prayer uh, for the saints and that they would recognize again uh, this Jesus who gave his life for them. The next part in chapter two, which we'll take a, a deep look at, this is looking into the part where they are the church um, the young church being birthed there by Christ, but through that church, they need to see how they are made as one in Christ. And then you move on from there, and it's Paul's mission and God's plan, the work that they're called to. They then get the, the prayer for the readers, which is the prayer for strength and understanding. And then the end of the book really talks about living out God's call. And if any of those speak to you, I invite you this week to open up to the book of Ephesians and do a read-through of the entire book. But for this morning and the time that I have, I want to look at Ephesians 2. And within that, here's a few of the verses. It says in, in verse 11 and following, For he is our peace. He is our peace. Jesus is our peace. Now, who is not clamoring or desiring more peace? peace in life. Uh, every time we look for peace, um, we often are dejected, heads down, we're worried, we're anxiety filled. We know we no need more peace in our life for both what's going on out there, but also what's storming on within here. And Paul wants us to know that the only way we're going to have peace, the center of our life, is to put our trust into Christ. And so defining in Jesus we find peace. And he goes on to say, in his flesh he made both groups, these diverse groups, these groups that were very different from one another, and he has broken down the dividing wall, the hostility between them. Can I get an amen through the screen? We need 
Jesus to tear down the hostilities uh, that are dividing people today, right? The ins and the outs, the haves and the have-nots, um, the Jew and the Gentile, like uh, Paul was working on, um, the Democrat and Republican, right? Uh, this faith and, and that faith, um, uh, all, all of these things. Um, uh, how we divide and conquer, how we diminish the humanity by looking past somebody else. We often are so defined around our own worldview or our own selves that we fail to recognize God's presence in anybody else that's different. And here, the genius that Paul is speaking to, the genius that Jesus worked on, stepping across the dividing line, moving these disparate parts and, and forming them into one. So the dividing wall is gone. The hostility is gone. Could we get rid of our hostility uh, of what separates us? And it says that Jesus abolished the commandments and the laws and all of those ordinances so that he himself could create one hum new humanity in place of the two. Did you hear that word? One new humanity that is formed as the body of Jesus. Thus making peace and reconciling both groups to God in one body through what? Through the cross. Uh, at the cross, we see what the world was trying to do, silence God, to get rid of Jesus, uh, to rebel against the ways that Jesus was pointing us to live, right? The world couldn't handle that. The powers that be could not handle that. Uh, Jesus was outside the box, and people wanted to get Jesus back in the box. So we know what the world was doing, but more important, what was God doing on the cross. And our scriptures are filled with that story, that God was reconciling the world to God's self, that God was drawing people back together again, that God was showing that this is what life and love looks like, that through the death and through the empty tomb, that life and love would win, that God would be up to something more. And so that's why we pay attention uh, to God's work in Jesus. And then he goes on, so he proclaimed peace to you who were far off and you who were near so that both of us have access to the Spirit. Did you get that? Whether you think you're close to Christ or far away from Christ, whether you think you got it and somebody else doesn't, none of that matters. It's for both and. Jesus exists for both and. And again, Jesus is working on bringing that together, both having access to that Holy Spirit, fire, and passion of faith. So then you are no longer, he writes, strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Don't you love that language? Citizens of the saints were joined together, the heavens in eternity and the way that we bring heaven into earth in the here and now, and that we are the household of God. Now, not all of us come from vibrant, healthy households. But can you imagine with me a household filled with love and grace? A household that fills with affirmation and support. A household that raises you up instead of tears you down. I want you to imagine that kind of household today because this is what Jesus is seeking to build within the church, within your home, and within our world. And this household, it says, he goes on to say, is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. They pointed to this. They taught this. They uh, brought people into that story with Christ himself as the what? The cornerstone. Folks, years ago when I was in India, first time I traveled there, we were working on a shelter in the slums of Delhi. And we were working in a multi-religious community, people of all different faith orientations. And we were going to build this center for women and children so they'd have a safe place to gather. In the first two days, our work was to dismantle the walls that had been built up, to form trust among people, and then to be able to, be, to build the foundation. But what did we start with? Each of us laying hands on the cornerstone. The Apostle Paul is saying, Jesus is the cornerstone upon, way, upon which this way of life can be built. And it's beautiful and it's good. The hostility gone, the disparate groups from each other gone, one in the household of God. And he goes on to say, in him, the whole structure is joined together and grows. You better believe it. The whole structure grows in him. And the holy temple is in the Lord in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is where he moves us to. 
from being totally cast out and separated, hostile with one another, moving in that direction where we see he is the peace, he is the cornerstone upon which to life, and then going to the place at the end where he says, which means each of you are going to be dwell, uh, uh, dwell, a dwelling place for God, built together into a dwelling place for God. Every heart, every mind, every soul, every household, every people group, all of humanity, a dwelling place for God. What a beautiful vision. And it's what Jesus came to create. And it's what Paul is trying to instill in our lives. And it's what rooted in rising our work together over two years is meant to take us deeper into. And so folks, everyone is called to be in the deep end. And I want you to imagine this image of a swimming pool where it starts really shallow and moves to the deep end. Jesus is calling everyone to dive into the deep end and to swim together so that our roots can grow down and so that we can rise up into this vision of Jesus. And the question for us in this two-year journey that Grace Lutheran Church is on, that you are on uh, together, is how are we growing and deepening across all of our ways of life? Well, I'm going to show you a video and share some of the financial work here in a minute. But first, I want to tell you about some adaptive ways that we've been living and nurturing our community uh, to be healthy and whole and well, a place for all people. You know, five years ago, we walked through an intentional vision and mission process so we could say, what is God calling us to at this particular time in our life together as almost a 70-year-old church? But some of us just getting started in the church, some of us being here the whole time, well, we worked on a vision process. And the vision that came to us that God spoke into our hearts was a radically inclusive, multicultural church who serve and lead together with the love of Jesus. And that is what God led us to begin. That was the first step. But there's a lot of steps to live into that full vision. Well, the next step then was bringing Pastor Salvador on our staff. The beginning steps for staffing purposely to fulfill the vision, to making sure we hired and called a staff that looked like our community that could help reach all parts of our community so that, again, all people would see that they have a place to call home in Des Moines, Washington, and beyond. The primary focus of Pastor Salvador's work was to do that grassroots from the bot grassroots from the bottom up uh, with our youth and family, but then to do intentional local outreach and to create bilingual worship and bilingual Bible study groups, ways of gathering where again folks could come with their various experiences and backgrounds and share in dynamic life together. And so we're beginning that work. Another step along the way was to hire Latino co-directors within our Grace Children's Center. So again, we could truly serve the people that God has brought into our zip codes and into our cities so that we can be one people. And the center is now thriving and growing and reaching people. Another step was to form a Spanish-speaking Bible study. Along the way, we had cultural festivals and foods being highlighted, along with some purposeful inclusion within our existing worship frames for Spanish songs, liturgy, and prayer. Our two-year Rooted and Rising initiative was a big step in bringing more voices to the table. So we don't just do group think, but we bring people from outside of us, iron sharpening iron so that we could grow and develop in meaningful new ways that God was leading us into. And of course, making some commitments with generosity to allow outreach and mission to be at the forefront of our work. Because with those resources, it makes this work possible. Of course, our Grace Children's Center is very diverse, as is our Grace Preschool. Our centers look just like our zip code. We've done a lot of intentional work and conversation around equity, inclusion, anti-racism, and LGBTQIA focus. We've developed bilingual baptismal liturgy. We've been uh, looking at curriculums and more intentional of what we're choosing. So we have a radically inclusive curriculum for VBS and our children's programming uh, throughout the year. A majority of our VBS attendees from this week and last year coming through the community and they come through our, our preschool and they come through our child care center and they come through community outreach. They come by people bringing their neighbors and friends and it reflects the diversity in which we live. 
vastly diverse community is represented in our various community groups, our AA, NA, Easter Egg Hunt, Fall Festival. We've had broadened expressions of cultural identities in worship through music and video and, and language. Uh, some people ask, why do we play worship videos online and, and in person? Why do we have all these other people speaking in our context? Not everybody likes worship videos. And I said, well, one, they're not always about you, right? They might not reach you, but what if they reach somebody else? And two, they're diverse voices, people sharing their story which helps us to find words to tell our story. So that again, we're hearing from the people of the whole world, from various religious denominations, from various backgrounds. And it sharpens us and equips us to better share our story too. It's powerful uh, to do that. We've had broader and intentional inclusion all across the way, especially in understanding our relationships for our members and newcomers where people are feeling safe enough to express gender identity openly in our community. This is important work. Our Kid Reach restarted this year as a safe place for kids from a diverse range of backgrounds to receive the support they need to succeed in school. Tutoring, an important element of raising all people to new life. Our shift in our confirmation project model to be more aware of the diversity and gifts and talents within our junior high disciples. Curriculum developed for leadership teams, the board, the FMT, adult and youth ed around movements toward anti-racism and multiculturalism. We're a host site for our yearly iftar dinner, our local Muslim community, Highline Community College, where we have formed multi-religious partnerships because truly a people at peace across religion reflects love and light into our world. And we are a center who's doing that. Our growth of our refugee resettlement effort and our ongoing learning community for an international border and local immigration concerns. We're on the forefront of that and just this week resettling another Afghan refugee family. By the way, did you know that our, our Des Moines Food Bank 100% increased this year in need with 25% of the clientele served is Afghan refugees as they get their feet on the ground and get going and forming life here better together. And again, we have people serving and leading and giving generously to our one fund to fund that ministry. And of course, we've had growth in age diversity across our ministries as we explore better together truly as a multi-generational family. Folks, this week at VBS, infants to 90-year-olds walking together. In our choir, newcomers, young people in our high school group, all the way up throughout the generations. We truly are called to be a multi-generational community and the church learning alongside, with, and for one another. Well, to give you more highlights, that's almost all the way through the alphabet, A to Z, of things that we're working on intentionally with each day. And now I want to share this video, this inspirational Root and Rising video from some recent work in our community. Last month, a dozen diligent volunteers drilled the holes for our new fellowship hall lights. This stewardship project will provide an improved space for our worship and community.
It's been almost three years since we began our refugee resettlement ministry, and this month we will welcome our second Afghan refugee family and begin the journey again of doctors and dentist appointments, navigating services, government systems, the language and cultural differences. And it's because of the One Fund and Grace's incredible generosity that we can continue our commitment to refugee resettlement and the lasting relationships that are built as we walk alongside each refugee family on their journey towards independence, self-sufficiency to full life in the U.S. This is Lasting Accompaniment. Boom Baker coming to you live from the thorny branches of pesky blackberry bushes. Last year, these thorny branches had 15 people working hard to overcome them. The branches were cleared from the pathway to allow our community kids to safely walk on it to and from school. 170 people impacting the lives of hundreds. This church, is grace in action. On September 15th, we will have another opportunity to serve our community. There are 17 service projects this year. I'm excited to see how many lives will be impacted as a result of our day of serving. All of this continues to be possible because of your generosity and engagement. Continue with us as we pray enthusiastically, commit fully, engage deeply, and give generously. Are you still in? amazing work to which we say thanks and praise be to God that giving in that way with our outreach partners both here and around the world transforming lives this is what Paul was talking about the household of God a spiritual indwelling place for God's spirit to live within all well a few more things on the financial impact as well did you know that at the end of quarter two here of our two-year initiative, um, we had that goal of 100% participation in our faith community. Again, diving into the deep end and swimming through this together to worship, connect, and serve. 100% of people and those that we bring into this. And then we had a 3.9 million goal for our two-year generosity effort. Well, so far, a little over 3.1, it looks like, has been committed to that work. And after six months, 25% of our two-year initiative, we are on track to give about $2.88 million. Again, people have different seasons of giving, so we'll see where that totally lands. And so we still have work to do and in inviting generosity as God blesses and as God allows that spirit to move within people to give generously. And the impact that this has had. Uh, last year, we had giving through this period of about 429,000. And this year, 721,000. An increase of over 292,000 in the first six months of the year. Last year at this time, we were behind by 76,000. This year, we're ahead by 105,000, which is a difference of over 180,000 in real impact. Last year, we had only given about 65000 to our outreach partners, and this year already, we've given out over 126000 Again, first fruits reaching people in need. Our partners' faith and energy and spirit is being bolstered in the good work that they do. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity and continue to pray about how God might utilize those resources to bring the church and God's story of life, death, and resurrection uh, to all people. Truly, our church is more engaged. We are more busy. We are more vibrant. And as we become vibrant, we have something to invite others into where they too want to see what Jesus is up to in this transformed people. I also want to say thank you for your trust, for your questions and suggestions along the way, for being engaged, and yes, for your generosity. As we look ahead to the next six months and just a few months out, we already are praying for our travelers to El Salvador who will be leaving in just a week. 
for our youth and family summer camp at Lake Crescent, for Carmen as she begins her music ministry here, for our worship teams as they pour out life and faith and hope, and for our building team as they complete the lighting project here in our fellowship space in August. And folks, mark your calendars. For Sunday, September 15th, is that will be our Grace in Action Day, a day where we huddle for about a 30-minute worship experience and prayer, and then we're sent out into the community to serve all kinds of different servant projects. And then we come back together early evening for a festive party where we celebrate the work, a job well done for what God has accomplished in and through us as the church. And so much more to come. Look for those links to get signed up and ways in which to serve. Well, I started out sheep without a shepherd. We have a shepherd. We looked at Paul's letter in Ephesians 2 of how to be the household of God, the indwelling place of God, the dividing walls gone, and true life built. We shared inspiration and thankfulness and gratitude for what God has been doing in and through the church as we walk together. So I think it only appropriate to close now with a prayer for the readers that Paul wrote. And this prayer is from Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 21. I'd invite you this week to highlight that in your Bibles and to pray that prayer continually through the next six months of Rooted and Rising and our shared work together. And so I'll pray that prayer now for us. He writes, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Rooted and rising in our Lord and Savior Jesus. Thanks be to God.
Let us now pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you are sent into the world, may you know of God's grace and love. May you know that Christ dwells within all of us. And may we live as a new humanity, a humanity that blesses and builds life. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.